Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, team. God is good. Amen. Put your hands together. Give him a good praise. Come on, put your hands together. Give him a good praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody with your Bibles in your hand. Repeating after me, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. As I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you that your word brings not only life and light to all that hear it. And God, we're going to pursue recklessly with you. And we're not going to stop till we receive it. Exactly what you have for us. And God, we come against every force that's on assignment to stop us from moving and operating and declare you're rebuked in Jesus' name. And we declare you are Lord to the glory of God today. Bless every hearer in Jesus' name. Bless this word that we're about to share. In Jesus' name. Help us to speak forth your mind in this hour. Touch everyone where this video presentation is seen and heard. Bless their lives now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you uh, switch and give me... Today's lesson is peace in troubled times. Peace in troubled times. Peace in troubled times. And let me start in with this intro statement. Is peace a far-fetched notion? Is it even possible, given the events and circumstances that surround us today? The answer is yes. It's possible. It is exactly what Jesus came to do. Isaiah writing about Jesus some 700 years before he appeared or manifest in the physical in the earth was shown and given through the Holy Spirit this title for Jesus, Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. We need to explore then biblical peace to bring a settling to our heart. Because there is a biblical peace and, that is, and there is a world notion of peace that is really not peace. See, the world's notion of peace is 
we want to control who draws their gun first. That's peace. But God's peace in the kingdom is different than that. John 16, 33. And everything is in New King James Version. John 16, 33. And it reads, These things have I spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation. But be of good cheer. Everybody say, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Jesus says, I have overcome the world. So he's saying, in essence, I'm the source of your peace. My God. Well, let me reference a story from one of my favorite cartoon characters. In his book, Your Winner, Charlie Brown, Charles Schultz, the writer, renders Charlie Brown and Linus looking very concerned. Violet asks, what are you two standing here looking so worried about? Charlie explains, we're afraid of the future. She asks, are you worried about anything in particular? Charlie says, oh no, we're worried about everything, Linus adds. Yes, our worrying is very broad-minded. We're worried about everything. We live in a world that floods us with much cause for alarm. A century ago, a tragedy could happen somewhere in the world and we would never hear about it. Or it would take weeks before we knew about it and it was over by then. Yet in this hour we live in real time. And, and we have immediate access to horrors and atrocities. As they unfold from every corner of the earth. The amount of seemingly overwhelming amounts of negative information can leave our minds overtaxed with grief. Our hearts gripping with fear and our souls weighted down with despair. Needless to say, it's all underpinned and, and, and chased by depression. I was reading an article about how during this time mental health workers are overtaxed because so many people are depressed. And some, some folk are depressed and it's manifesting in physical ailments. They don't know what, what's going on with them, but it's, it's symptomatic of depression. You can't get moving. You, 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 you stay in, 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 in a flurry of despair all the time. You're, you're worried about everything. Or you, you just do just the complete opposite. You lose all energy. You don't, you don't, you don't care about anything anymore. You, 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 you don't care what you look like and how you act. You don't care who comes and who goes. It's depression. And life has a way of keep pushing in until if you're not careful. Now, this is inside of the church and outside of the church that you'll end up depressed. Because you are taking thought of what will happen tomorrow. When Jesus said, let tomorrow take care of itself. But we worry. But we worry. So, we're here to talk about peace in troubled times. Good news for you is that Jesus knew that these times would come. Know this. Nothing makes the news headlines today which can rattle Jesus off the throne. Not a thing that's going on is going to dethrone him or his daddy. Come on. And as long as he's on the throne, just know he's in charge. 
Come on. Come on, come on. He's not rattled. How do I know that? It's not just because Trammer said it, but, but in Hebrew 12, 28, it says this. Therefore, that means from this point forward, start thinking this way. Since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken. Come on, come on. Why are you shaking when you're in a kingdom that cannot be shaken? Everything shakes you up. Why? If you're in a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Let us have grace. Let us have favor. That's what grace is. Special favor. Let us have grace. Or, or in other words, enjoy the grace of the kingdom that cannot be shaken. Are you out there? By which we may serve God acceptably with, with reverence and godly fear. Now, I told you there's a world fear and there's a, 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 a reverential fear of the Lord, which is godly fear. It's okay to fear God. It keeps you safe. Keeps you sinless. He also knew his followers would need an anchor for the soul in troubled time. A power greater than themselves to face the trials ahead. Jesus prepared you for troubled times. Come on, come on. There's you, no use being in him if you're not going to rely on him when you get into trouble. You go everywhere else but to him. And, and when you get in trouble, why do you go seek trouble? You get into more trouble. See, because some things that look like relief is trouble. They just kick the can down the road, but you're still in trouble. Whew. Anybody know what I'm talking about here? So he builds them up with these words, John 14, 26 through 27. And let me be, be clear with you. Trouble comes to every life. It came to Jesus' life. It comes to every life. You won't be on this planet without some trouble. How I many you know I'm talking right? How many of you been in trouble? How many of you not in trouble now? Oh, that's less hands. Lord, I'm, what now? Oh, I, I, don't, oh, I shouldn't ask that question. <laughs> And I'm not talking to you. I don't want you to, to get depressed in this message. I want you to come up. To, to, to know you got help in trouble. And so Jesus writes this. The, the, he, he said this to him. John uh, 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 4, 26 to 27. It says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. That's, that's how you get out of trouble, by remembering what Jesus said to you. What promises he made to you. That's how you get out of trouble, remembering. How many of you know we need help with our memory sometimes? We go everywhere else, but remember what Jesus says to you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Remember that when you get alone. All right, all right. Then he said this, in case you don't think you have peace, he says, peace I leave with you. But it's not the peace that you're familiar with, it's my peace. I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. And then he ends it with this famous statement that, that we all know well. It said, let not your heart be troubled. And also to the, co the companion to not being in trouble, don't be afraid. Amen. Holler across the room and somebody tell them, don't be, don't be afraid. See, trouble comes to make you afraid. 
It comes to make you afraid, make you back away from what Jesus said, make you think that it doesn't matter, make you think that it doesn't have any power, make you think that it won't work. Make you doubt. Say it again. Don't be afraid. Peace is something everybody wants, but few seem to find. Let me give you the, the, the foundation of peace. Peace comes from the Hebrew word uh, shalom. In Hebrew, shalom is peace. Which refers to a general well-being or contentment or contentment that comes from God. General well-being or contentment that comes from God. It's from outside of the world. So in essence, shalom isn't the absence of trouble. It simply denotes, rather, wholeness or completeness. So shalom is wholeness or completeness. You can be whole and complete in the middle of troubling times. Praise you, Jesus. Whole and complete. When other folk are missing it by far, you're doing all right. Anybody ever stop to complain about something and then you run into a few folk that were worse off than you? And made your stuff look like you, you almost got embarrassed. I, I'm ashamed that I even operated the way I did. And God has blessed me. Anybody ever had that kind of that, that kind of wake up moment that oh God, oh God, I'm complaining. You know, you know, it, 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 usually we at the place where we got everything we need. We 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 upset because we're not getting all our wants. Peace is one of the fundamental characteristics of the Messianic kingdom. Messianic means the kingdom that Jesus started. In the Old Testament, I'll give you some Old Testament references, and then I'm going to give you one New Testament one that shows that, 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 that peace is fundamental to, to life in the kingdom. And it starts with what, what, what God promised we would have and what he said he would do to ensure peace. A, a, a favorite of mine is also something that you hear as, as a benediction response. And it is just that. It's a closing argument on the comfort of the Lord. And it's from number 6, 24 through 26. And it says this, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. That means the Lord says, I'm going to keep my face in your face. The Lord lift up his, his countenance upon you and give you peace. As he is face to face with you, you get his peace. So stay in his face. What did I say? Stay where? In whose face? Whose face? So what about them other faces? Well, you need a face of help when you're in trouble. The next one is Haggai or Haggai. Haggai 2 and 9. And it says there, 
And it's talking about two temples. But it's really talking about two states of people. One temple in the Old Testament and a new temple, which is who you are in the, in, in the New Testament. And it says there, the glory of this latter temple, that's who you are, shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. And I said, Lord of hosts, why is Lord of hosts and peace in the saying? He's, Lord of hosts is, is, is army talk. Kingdom army talk. When, when, the, when the Lord says, and in this new temple place that you are in, I will give you peace. And I'm going to back it up with my army. Whew. Lord of hosts. You got back up today. To keep you in kingdom peace. Woo. Let, let us run to the New Testament. Acts 10, 34 through 36. Peter preaching. And it said there, Acts 10, 34 through 36. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth I perceive that God shows no partiality. He treats us all the same. But in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, peace, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. Are you, did you get that? He gave it to the children of Israel and said, he's coming and he's going to be the prince of peace and he's going to be Lord of all. And he is. We are afforded peace because Christ bore the penalty of our sins on the cross. And now the Holy Spirit is dwelling in us according to Romans 8 and 11. And then 1 John 4 and 4 says that the greater one lives inside of you. The one that's in you is greater than him in the world. Oh. And then Isaiah 26 and 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is, is what? You can only be kept in perfect peace if you keep your mind set on him. See, you can't be in peace and be in trouble. And when you get in trouble, does it mean your mind wander? Nobody answered. You need and must trust the Prince of Peace. Jesus gave us the method to fight with. And, and, and I'm going to give it to you. He gave us a method. And part of the method, we use part of the verse to acquire things but there's a method in, in this particular verse that I'm going to give you. John 15, 4 through 7. And I'm going to explain it verse by verse. Start with verse number 4. John 15 and 4. John 15 and 4. You still out there? Amen. Everybody still woke? Amen. Everybody getting out of trouble? Amen. Everybody walking in peace? Amen. Everybody's mind stable? At least for the time you in here, huh? Amen. Stay stable. Turn to somebody and tell them, stop shaking. You're a little nervous, stop shaking. Stop shaking. I know some trouble has come to your lives in some, some ways you didn't expect, but stop shaking. Come on. Jesus Christ. Stop shaking. You got some no's, but stop shaking. Some things came up that you didn't expect. Stop shaking. 
It didn't go just as you planned. You missed it. You, you did it. Stop shaking because it's your fault. <laughs> it ain't no fault. It's your fault. <laughs> stop shaking. Turn to somebody tell them, stop shaking. Stop shaking. Woo. Keep shaking the babies if you need to. <laughs> Verse number four. It says, abide in me and I in you. This is Jesus talking. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you. Unless you abide in me. Is it possible you're trying to bear fruit without being connected to the source that helps you produce fruit? Come on, come on, come on, come on. I love when people want to be disconnected and blessed. You don't want to be hooked up right, but you still want to bless it. You don't want to obey nothing. You don't want to follow no commands, but you want the blessing. And then you say, it's the devil, but you disconnect it. You unhook from power. Now, if I unplugged the keyboard, Tony, with all of his skills, can bang himself into kingdom come. Can riff and run and up and back and do all kinds of stuff, but you're not going to hear it. And as far as you know, he may be able to play, he may not. We know he can play, but what if we didn't know? We wouldn't be able to prove it because we don't hear anything. You know why there's no fruit? The fruit is in the hearing. What we hear is the fruit of that, the fact that he can play is because he's disconnected to power. And when you disconnect it from the source, you don't produce fruit. Oh, God. Are you out there? Disconnect is where are you at? With whom are you with? Does it keep your mind stable? Does it keep you off focus? Because sometimes we don't know we off until we far gone. It happens a little bit at a time. Are y'all out there? What does abide mean? We think we know, but here, here, here's what it means. I'm not taking anything for granted today. Here is the definition for abide, and it's an abbreviated one because when I looked up abide in, in my Webster, my Noah Webster dictionary, that's, that's the old-fashioned one that still mentions God in it. It means to remain stationary. Remain stationary. To be firm. Immovable. Remain stationary. To be firm. Immovable. So let's revisit this fourth verse just a little bit more. Just, and it says there, this is what I want to share. This verse is saying, this connection from the source is not beneficial for you. What is the biggest piece? You are cut off from your lifeline. And you don't need to be Cut off from your lifeline. Stay connected. Young people, stay connected. Middle-aged folk, old folk, stay connected. And the worst thing you can have is a faulty connection. 
It's dangerous. Verse 5. Then Jesus goes on to say, I am the vine, you are the branches. Who are you? Who's the vine? Then he goes on to say, he, they, you, me, us, who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. When you are connected, it's natural that you have the, the life source to get fruit out the vine, off the branch. Out the vine, off the branch. For without me, say without me, without me. you can do nothing. And we keep trying to do a lot of stuff without him. And wondering why our hands is empty, why it's not producing. We can do nothing without him. Oh, nothing. And, and, and when he says nothing, there, let, let, let me explain what nothing means. Because sometimes this, 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 this is how people get, get fooled. They're not connected to Jesus, but they're still getting something. They, they're getting a few things. They, they, they're getting a little money from somewhere. They're getting this. They're getting that. But Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. When Jesus says nothing, his nothing is more than your getting something. Woo. Are you out there? When Jesus says, without me, you can do no thing, he's saying, you will not do anything of kingdom value. That's valuable to the kingdom. What you get through Jesus is of kingdom value. My salary I get is of kingdom value because I make kingdom return on it. I tithe out of it. So it has kingdom value in it. Ooh. And so if it has kingdom value in it, I get kingdom return. Over and over and over again. I don't worry about people that give into the kingdom because I said you have seed in the ground and you are valuable. A kingdom value. You may get laid off. You may lose this. You may lose. You will not lose out because you have kingdom value. Oh, you're not hearing me today. Oh, you don't want to hear this. Because what you think you've acquired is something about the way of the world is either pay me now or pay me later. <laughs> something is going to come for it. Your best nest egg is obedience in the kingdom. That's your best insurance plan. Whew. The reason why he said, without me you can do no thing, that means I am not in it. And he doesn't bless anything he's not in. Oh, that's, y'all don't like that. Let me go. Verse 6. <laughs> so I'm telling some people, keep holding on to it. Just, just hold on. Something will require it. Something will snatch it. And some of you been saved. I'm, I'm saving for a, rain, a rainy day. And, 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 and a rainy day turned to a hurricane and a monsoon. Good. <laughs> 
just like the people on, on, on the coastlines that put their houses up on stilts. The water is only going to come this high. Then the water comes up higher than that, knock the house off the stilt and sits it next to the stilt. Rainy day. Lovely day. Lovely day. Because if you don't sow into the kingdom, you won't reap kingdom benefits. And the kingdom is so amazing until it affects every area of your life just like the world affects every area of your life. The kingdom has your health in it. It has your wealth in it. Has your peace in it. Has your well-being in it. Has your fortitude in it. Has your ability to live in it. Has your ability to push off death. It's in the kingdom and not the world. And you are dying daily because you won't invest in the kingdom of God. Because you learn how to hold things from the world, but you didn't learn how to release in the kingdom. Whew. Oh, somebody go get this today. And then as soon as it go messy in the world, you run to the kingdom. Can you do, can you, no, 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 no. There's something else that's going on now. Every time somebody dies, they have a GoFundMe page. Why you got a GoFundMe page when you, you, you didn't think that you would need to, something happen to be buried? Why don't you have insurance? It's cheap when you're young. You turn my age and you have to pay $4,000 to get a $6,000 policy. And you run around like nothing's going to happen to me. When, when, when every time I go into a, a, a funeral home, it's more young people there than old people. And when there's a real old person, they, they, everybody, come see how good they, come see. This, this person is 90 years old. This person... Get you some insurance so they won't have a potluck for you. It's irresponsibility, but that's how we think about stuff. Verse number six, I'm sorry. If anyone does not abide in me, this is Jesus talking. Don't get mad at the messenger today. I'm just the messenger here. He is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. This is the outcome of disconnect. The outcome of disconnect is withering. And when you first start to wither, you don't know it. Withering means a slow, steady, backwards process of becoming useless. You don't know it at first. Withering. I bought some plants, like many of you do, and they, they all pretty when you first get them. And then in 90 degree days, you forget, you think because you water them Monday, you don't have to water them till Friday. And you look outside and your money is laying sideways. <laughs> and, 
am I talking right here? You, you ain't walled them, and then you go and you try to drown them at that point. I, I bought some, and they were all pretty. I, every time I drove by, I was just admiring the flower. And then one day I drove by, and the flower had done this. Then it started losing its leaves. And then after a while, the plant just started going, going backwards. I say, this thing is withering. Well, that's what happened when you're disconnected from the source. You start withering. Not all at once, because you're going to look good for a season. <laughs> Until the disconnect catches up with all of the plant. And when the disconnect from the top down, it starts just getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And afterward, something that was beautiful is barely recognizable. Because it's disconnected from the source. Did you hear me? And so Jesus says, what happens to stuff that withers that way? It's not good for anything. Stop trying to keep making it good after it withers and dries out. He said, just pick it up and get warm by it. Throw it in a fire. God, that's all it's good for. Something that was beautiful and wonderful, but that's the plan of the devil. John 10 and 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said again, abide in me. He said it another way. He said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that you might have non-withering life. And that more abundantly, supportive life. More abundant life means you will stay alive. Turn to somebody and say, stay alive. 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 Oh. Does this make sense? Last verse, verse 7. And it says there, this is the one that we repeat all the time. This is, this is the favorite. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Or you will ask what you will and it shall be done for you. We notice the ask what you desire in this verse, but we overlook the key to the verse. If you abide in me and my what? abide in you see it's only if the word is abiding in you that you can ask what you will and it will be done to you according to the word according to the word you got to ask it that way Jesus saw abiding as being faithful to his words be faithful to what I told you be faithful to the fact that I told you, my peace I give to you, not as the world give I unto you. Then he connects it to answered prayer. When you ask according to what I laid inside of you, then you can ask what you will based on that word and it'll be done. What Jesus is saying is that you ask it on me, through me, by me, and because it is me, it's got to happen. It's not happening because it's not through him. On him. His words are key to answered prayer. Tinney said this. The connection is ma maintained by obedience and prayer. To remain in Christ and to allow his words to remain in you means a conscious acceptance of the authority of Jesus over your life. And that's what's happening in the world today. Jesus does not have authority in our lives. And he's got to be the authority figure. And when he is the authority figure, you go to him in prayer you can ask for Jesus to do these things. Allay your worry. Rebuke your fear. 
Stop your anxiousness. Stop the depression. In your preoccupation with the woes of tomorrow. As you are connected and firmly stationed in his word. Peace isn't the absence of trouble. It's God's filling our heart despite of them. It's not the absence of trouble. It's God taking care of our, our everything in spite of the trouble. Some of you are in spite of folk today. You're here in spite of what trouble tried to do to you. Thank you, Lord. Ooh. You survived it. It didn't kill you. It didn't knock you out. It didn't take you to the graveyard. Come on, you here in spite of what the trouble had called forth for your life to destroy you. And here you sit able to say, amen. Thank you, Jesus, if you feel like it. Praise God sometimes. I worship you when I feel like it. But in spite of you feeling the way you did, your trouble didn't take you out. And you sitting upright as a witness to the fact that, that I'm so glad that trouble don't last. <laughs> Anybody in the room glad that they don't last our way? You may be in trouble, but <laughs> I, I'm held by something that's greater than my trouble. Come on, come on, come on. You, you, you make it. Take a good deep breath. Wow, 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 wow. Somebody couldn't do that. Oh, God, oh, God. Yeah. You might be in trouble, but you're breathing. <laughs> you might have gone through something, but you, you're still here. And sometimes you look at yourself in amazement. I don't know how I made it out of that. I, I don't know how this worked out. And, and some of you on the other side of you selling God, I don't know how you're going to work it out. That's when you ought to add this phrase, but I know you're going to work it out. Because you have this word with me. You have this testimony with me. That you won't leave me nor forsake me. And that you will take care of it as I lay my cares on you. I'm talking about people that's been in trouble. You already have a testimony. That God's been good. What are you waiting to trust him for when he's already shown you that he's able To keep you. And every time something go up, you go into the woe is me. Like he's never dragged you out of something before. That's why you're sitting here. Because he kept you. If you abide in me. And my word abide in you. You will ask what you will. And it will be given. If you abide in me. In my word. Abide in you. You will. Blessings to you today. <laughs> Come on, lift up them hands. Abide in them a little bit. <laughs> somebody that knows what trouble can do. But somebody that knows who, what God can do too. Somebody that knows that he's greater than your trouble. Open your mouth and tell him something. Give him a good praise in this house. Hallelujah. He is the peace in troubled times. Great God, great God. Great God. Great God. Great God. Come on, I don't hear you. Some of you transition right on into the peace of God. 
based on this word. Transition on in. Woo! Woo, God. Abide in me. Abide in me. Jesus, abide in me. <laughs> abide in me. Abide, abide. Abide, abide, abide. Be stationed. Be firm. Hallelujah. How many of you needed to hear about this peace today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All over the room say, I shall have what Jesus gave me. And he gave me a peace that passes all understanding. Give him a good praise in this roar. Abide in me, abide in me. Hallelujah. God, we love you today. And we praise you today. We thank you that we're connected to life and we're not withering today. Today we won't be fire food. We thank you for that today. Hallelujah. We will go from life to life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you came that we might have life and that more abundantly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your presence here today. Abide, abide. Abide, abide. Abide in me. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy, for how great you are toward us. And, ooh, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you that we long to hear your word today, that we have no other agenda than to listen and hear. We thank you for ears to hear and hearts to receive life. Because without hearing your word, we will wither. And we thank you, God, that we're not withering. We're not withering. Bless every person in this room. Give them what they need as they stay connected. Much fruit. Much fruit. Much fruit. Much fruit. In Jesus' name. Put them hands back together. Give them a good praise. Praise the Lord again. To all of our listeners, we thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you, and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website at dovechurch.org slash giving, which takes you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.